This is the first part of a new segment about up and coming indie directors, ones to watch out for. Boom. Now then, we are the Don't Tell Show, we make and review gritty, realist cinema. We put a new video out every Monday, so if that sounds like your sort of thing, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you there. For 10 years, Heather Young has been making films, evolving her style and themes out there in Canada, building up to her first feature film, Murmur, which we're going to review today. And what are those styles and themes, you may ask? Well, I'll tell you. What a good boy he is. Young operates within the docu-fiction murder address, which is the, you know, the kind of thing I talk about a lot on here that I love. It's a sort of mixture of real actors and trained actors, reality and fiction. And it's, it generally follows sort of everyday people dealing with very small to the wider world everyday problems, but problems that are very important and very intimate to themselves. So she started out in her, her oldest show, um, Howard and Jean. Um, it's about an older lady who's living alone with her, her chihuahua. And she, she shows the action in this by following the action with a handheld documentary style and mixing that with static shots that let the action unfold in front of us. And this style, this style evolved in, in the next shorts, Fish and Milk, which are all available on her channel, until eventually the, the sort of handheld documentary style has completely moved away and now the, it would left with just static shots. So over the years that she's been working, she's become more confident in herself in letting, in just letting the story sort of tell, tell itself and letting the audience engage with that and take, moving away from sort of following the action as such. And now the world that she's creating is happening in and out of the frame. And you get that, that Gerhard Lampert thing where people do move in and out of the frame and it tells you there's a world outside it. And it allows the audience to just sort of sit back and let what will be, will be. You'd be hiding from me. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's coming. But it hasn't become more comfortable for the characters though, as the frame has closed in and quadranted it on them, sometimes reducing them to just a bit of an outside quiet and corner at frame. Weeks of exercise and, and, uh, and nutrition training. And boy, they are quiet. That's one of the most notable things about this film is the lack of the lack of music, the lack of noise. A lot of the time, a lot of the scenes are just accompanied by the sort of drones and buzzing free freezer sounds, fans, mops on floors, all this quiet and stillness that complements the static frame. Because these are the these are films about the stillness of, of life. They're films about those those quiet moments you have alone. They they're films about when. The film's about the world you see when you sort of step out of the, the hustle and bustle of, and the noise of everything and just have a look around. Like if you go to meet someone and you're 20 minutes early and you start noticing things you've never seen before on your own street. It's, it's that sort of quiet, still, meditative view of life that works for the viewer and the participants as well. And much like the work of Sai Ming Liang, we get to spend time inside other people's digs and just sort of reach our own conclusion about it. Like, why would you put that there? Who bought that? What's that doing there? And it's sort of subliminal usually. So set design is just you don't notice it that much, but when you get into a, a film like this, you start you start looking at everything in there and, and thinking, wonder where she got that from. And you start thinking that everything has a story and everything is part of the biggest bigger picture. And that 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 ornament, that cup, that that poster, is, that those are all parts of this person's life, and they're all a part of the big whole that makes this person who they are. And it's all part of this show don't tell style of filmmaking, which has sadly become a style when it should be universal. Thank you, Christopher Nolan. So, um, the Department of Corrections has sent over your papers. That's what I'm talking about. When you hear something like that in a clip, you don't need it all explaining to you. You get that little bit and you think, Department of Corrections, what's she done wrong? And then you start thinking. Or a moment like this. where we've already seen a cow giving birth. So that it seems that there's a theme running through it and then when we get to that point, you start thinking, oh, right, maybe she's pregnant. And there is a point, there is a point in both those instances later on where our suspicions are verified. But it's the, what's important is the, the bit in between where the idea has been seeded and it being verified is what else, how you read what's happening differently with that potential piece of information, where you're applying that information to it and reaching our own conclusions about it. And the way that the films are respecting us enough to engage with us that way and to make us sort of work for it and engage with it properly like you would in real life. Strange that, isn't it? That, you know, how we aren't always handed information a lot of time we have to retrieve it ourselves and we, have, we, make, we make our own impressions on people and we're aware that we're making impressions on other people and we act in certain ways and it's, 
I don't know, maybe that is the difference between art and entertainment, because if you watch an entertainment film, it will tell you everything, and it, mo it won't make you work in that way, but art is much more like real life, and it, you have to work at it. And it's more rewarding, really. Anyway, Murmur is about an older lady called Donna who's forced to, forced to do community service because... And she finds some companionship there by saving a dog that's going to be sent to the knacker's yard and taking it home with her. Uh, this film is so kitchen sink that it starts with a shot of one. <laughs> As we see sort of Donna's everyday life, a story slowly unravels of a sort of loneliness and addiction, which may or may not help be helped by bringing an animal in. Okay. Go pee. Come on, let's go pee. It's cold. So as well as this film having all, all of the elements that I've just mentioned have been in the evolution of Heather Young's aesthetic, this, this one also shows that she she um, she adheres to this John Cassavetes quote where he said, um, the greatest location in the world is the human face. Apparently Cassavetes said that. It's a great quote. And uh, yes, Heather Young definitely adheres to that. As we see... Um, we spend so much time just looking at this woman who's, again, I've talked about this before, that she's a non-actor. So you don't, she isn't selling you anything, she's just existing there. And you'll get that when you see her face, you'll, you'll see all the laughs and the loves and the pain and everything in that face. You don't get that from Hollywood, Hollywood actors, all you see is diet plans and anal bleaching. But this is the real deal. <laughs> Um, just like in Never Rarely, Sometimes Always, which, by the way, these were my two favourite films of last year. Um, we get we get normal people in the mix do, just sort of going through their jobs and the, the camera stays on the main character and just catches their responses, which, again, it's the show don't tell thing. They don't, need to, they don't need to explain stuff to you. You can see when something's said, a question, anything like that, you see how they react to it, that, the effect that that has on it, and it's engaging to you in a much more realistic way that... I think it's great that two two filmmakers are do are, are both sort of taking that style. It's like is this sort of a new sort of wave of realism that we're getting? I hope so. I'd like to see more people doing that. I mean, the secrets of the films all lie in her face. Even when we see her, her life start seems to start picking up, and suddenly there's a bit more color in there's a bit more color in her world, but there still seems to be a sadness there, as if she she knows that. Really, this is just another addiction that she's taking on. Or, or maybe she's just accepting that life is about those moments, any moments of happiness that we can find amongst the daily grind. I don't know, that's kind of the beauty of it. That Heather Young's been building a, a long resume of evolving sensitivity about the invisible moments in all our lives that respects us and respects the subject enough to not give answers, but to give lots of questions. And then to leave it all to us to decide in the end. Great work. All available links will be in the description below. Please do check them out and um, keep an eye out of this director. I think she's got great things to offer us in the future. We are the Don't Tell Show. Subscribe and we'll see you on Monday.